This mole uses three kinds of dried chilies. We've got mulatto chilies. These are these wrinkly black ones. Pasilla chilies, they are shiny and black. And guajillo chilies, a deep, deep red like this. So go ahead and slice them open and check out those seeds and remove any veins. And now we wanna go ahead and roast them in a cast iron skillet. So I'm just gonna throw them all in. Go ahead and flip them over when one side gets roasted. And you're looking for the skin to start getting a little blistered. Transfer those into a heat proof bowl and we're gonna cover them up with some boiling water. This will rehydrate them and a side effect is it'll create a nice broth from the chili juices. Set those aside until they cool down. And we're gonna take the same skillet and we're gonna char some vegetables. We've got an onion, a bulb of garlic, a tomato cut in half, and three tomatillos husked and chopped in half as well. Start those off skin side down so we get some char going on the skin. Best to cut the onion into quarters, um, I realized halfway through the process. And for those tomatillos and tomatoes, you can feel free to put them flesh side down as well to get a little bit of color on that. Think of the roasted tomatoes you get on the side of a English breakfast, and that's what you're looking for. Once they're all roasted up, transfer them to a bowl, and we're gonna use the same skillet again to fry up some aromatics. So put about a centimeter depth of cooking oil into the skillet. I've got some almonds. We're gonna fry those until they're golden brown. Pecans, 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 same thing, fry them until they're golden brown. Two cinnamon sticks. These are kind of cool. They sort of open as you fry them. A couple tablespoons of black raisins. These sort of rehydrate as you fry them, so they'll expand a little bit. I've got one ripe plantain. Cut them into like one or two centimeter slices and fry both sides until golden brown. Next, some herbs. We've got cumin seeds some cloves, some allspice berries, and some star anise, as well as a little bit of dried oregano. And in hindsight, you should probably do these herbs in a dry skillet so that they're easier to remove because <laughs> they basically got stuck in the oil. But that's all right because next we've got a full loaf of brioche, or you could use challah or any sort of soft bread. And I cut them into cubes and uh, they sort of picked up those extra herbs. Now to build our mole, we're gonna put the chilies into a food processor and blend those. And then one by one, we're gonna add in each of our other ingredients, the onions and the tomatoes and the tomatillos and the plantains and the nuts and the herbs and the raisins and the bread all go into here, as well as some of that soaking liquid from the chilies. And it may be easier if you blend everything separately and then put them together in the end. That way you don't end up overfilling your blender. Transfer that into a bowl, and you can throw that in the fridge uh, overnight or up to a week. Now we're gonna start making a chicken soup. So fill a Dutch oven with two liters of boiling water. Bring that up to a boil. And to that water, we're gonna add a quartered up onion and a whole bulb of garlic, as well as some salt and pepper, and a whole chicken that's been butchered into pieces with the bone in. So what we're doing here is building sort of a chicken soup for the broth as well as for the chicken. So cover that up and let it go for as long as it takes to get to 74 centigrade or 165 Fahrenheit so that that chicken is cooked. Now into a large pot, we're gonna put our mole and one cup at a time, we're gonna add in our chicken broth. And we're using a stick blender, we're gonna puree that mole until it's a smooth, kind of loose consistency that looks a little bit like this. Don't worry if it gets too liquidy because we're gonna cook this for quite a while and it will reduce. So put it on medium heat and let it go for as long as you really want. It can go for an hour, it can go for eight hours if you really want to get those flavors extra deep. So I went for about two hours and towards the tail end of the process, I added in a whole bar of chocolate. If you can get your hands on Oaxacan chocolate, go for it, but I could not. So I use dark chocolate, that way it doesn't lend too much sweetness.
So it's not as black as the pictures I've seen of Mole Negro before, but hmm, it's deep, it's rich, it's earthy. Uh, it's got a little sweetness and a little bit of spice, not as much spice as you'd expect from that many chilies. It's palatable, but it takes a long time. Now, if you're like me and you like spending your whole weekend wrapping your head around a long process like that, then this is definitely for you. But if you want just a quick fix, then go to your local Mexican restaurant. And if you want to see more international cooking videos, then be sure to subscribe. See you guys next time. Cheers.